Hello, we are JTEC students. My name is Joseph Wilson. Harry Parker. Ashley Early. And today we are going to talk about the disc brake system and how to diagnose and repair. Some of the following tools uh, that you're going to be using, you're going to need to uh, uh, repair and uh, diagnose are the following. When it comes to run out, the reason why we want to inspect and see how your run out works is because you want to make sure that your rotor is spinning, you know, accurately. And what the run out does, if you have a problem, if your run out is not accurate, it's going to cause your uh, brake to uh, vibrate and also pulsations when you, while you are braking coming to a stopping point. And how do we inspect for the run out. We inspect the run out by using the dial indicator. It will allow us to see how bad it is or how you know what needed to be done with your rotor. This rotor. We have this thing set up. I should look at right here the dial indicator is currently preset to zero. Okay. Now the way to do this is that you're gonna rotate this rotor a one full revolution. The dial indicator will either dictate, will either move to the left or to the right. If that happens, if we move to the left or to the right, as you're going along, you know, in one controlled revolution, what you do is that you add up those total together and that will give you your run out. Hi, it's Harry again and I'm back. Um, and I'm back here to explain to you on how you would do a brake inspection and determine whether or not you need to do a further diagnosis or a repair of uh, the brake system or any of its components on this 2006 Chevy Colorado with a 2.8 liter engine. Okay. All right, if you're gonna do a brake inspection, it's a good idea to um, use one of these brake system checklists uh, so that you can use a systematic approach with inspecting your brakes to make sure that you don't miss anything. Um, if you work for a shop, they're probably going to have one that's already format, formatted to them. If you don't work for a shop, you can pull um, several different types of these online. So I recommend that you would use some sort of, of checklist. Now with our initial brake inspection, we are going to start underneath the hood and what you're going to do is you are going to inspect your fluids um, you're going to remove the cap and you're going to visually inspect the condition and color of your brake fluid if it's dirty um, if it's if it's if it's not a clear color and it, it's, it's uh, dirty and dark um, that's going to indicate that there's a lot of contaminants in your brake fluid and it's going to uh, create a opportunity for your brakes to fail and, and also uh, damage components if it's not serviced. Beyond the fluid and the fluid level, you want to check your master cylinder and your booster, your brake boosting system. You want to make sure that everything looks okay, that none of the lines are showing that they have any damage or any leakage. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and start with um, the next phase of the inspection. Okay, with the vehicle lifted and safely in the air now, our next step is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove the tire. Um, prior to removing the tires, this would also be a good time to use your tire depth gauge. Um, this is the same gauge that we're gonna be used to check pad thickness, but you can go ahead and and you can check your uh, tire depth, you know, while you're doing this. So moving along, what we have to do is we can do a quick visual inspection, looking for any obvious uh, discrepancies with our braking system. But beyond that, we're, we're gonna have to remove the brake caliper um, so that we can properly inspect the pads and then also do our uh, rotor 
variation of thickness uh, check. All right, with the caliper assembly removed, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna inspect the caliper itself. What we're gonna pay close attention to is uh, any leaks or any damage done to the brake line and hoses. We're gonna make sure that uh, the caliper bleeder screw is okay. We're also going to inspect our pistons and the caliper itself for excessive corrosion or damage or anything that's going to obstruct it from functioning properly. Like for instance right here, this one has some burrs and stuff so this piston actually right, so probably should be replaced. We also want to inspect the seals. If we want to service it, we would actually remove it so that we can actually surface the piston. The next thing well, that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that our brake pads are within tolerance. Okay, your pad thickness, you're going to refer to the owner's uh, manual in uh, the specifications um, recommended by the manufacturer to get your actual pad thickness. But there's two ways that you can go ahead and, and, and uh, measure the thickness. These pads actually, you can tell that uh, they're already within tolerance. One thing that you don't want to do when you're doing an inspection is relying on where these tabs are because they could possibly be bent and uh, they could throw um, your inspection off. So we always want to use the correct tools. So one of the things we'll use is we can use a tire depth gauge and you'll set it here and you'll go down till you make contact. And then right here, you'll get your reading. It's gonna be 12. So the next procedure to what we are going to do now is gonna basically measure the variation of thickness on your rotor. Okay, what I did here, I put a marking here and marking here. We're gonna measure it in six different locations. And um, numbers, you know, from using this micrometer here, we're gonna basically uh, subtract the difference. And you know, we're gonna do from the highest point to the lowest point and subtract the difference if there are any difference in there and that's what your basic variation of thickness is so without further ado this already has been zero rise it's my micrometer here so we're gonna use start measuring it from this side we got in this location here okay and then rotate on the other side that we have done that from the highest point to the lowest point and we're going to subtract you know the difference in that what is your, your total variation of thickness will be and you cross reference that with your um uh, with in your technical manual to see if this rotor is still within specs if it's not that is a good time to replace this wire otherwise you will have problem with your braking system and it will not be as safe to utilize this uh, rotor for uh, driving. Uh, we have covered how to visually inspect your brake pads, your rotors, your calipers. Visually inspecting them, make sure we, they are within uh, inspects. Also, we have used the tools, the proper tools, to ensure that they are in accordance with your uh, manufacturer manual in inspections. The reason why we want to make sure that they are working and functioning accurately is because in a day-to-day -day driving, all life matters. You being the main responsible driver, you are responsible for yourself and all others out there that are on the road. So make sure to go from point A to point B. This is one of the most important reasons why you make sure your braking system are within specs and working accordingly. Thank you once again. Uh, my name is Joseph and with my fellow, stu uh, fellow student uh, Harry, we are JTEC and thank you for this opportunity listening with us.